Welcome to Qigong class. I'm Dr. Daniel Hoover and Veronica Hoover is going to be helping today as we go through Qigong. The series we're doing is called The Eight Brocades. It's eight movement patterns that are designed to warm up the entire musculoskeletal system while activating, supercharging the superhighways in our meridians, in our, in our um, energy systems of our body. There's eight extraordinary vessels. Each of these movement patterns is designed to specifically open those. So let's get started. Horse dance. Every time we get into a horse dance, I want you to use it as an opportunity to have a reminder to reset your whole system. So you're grounded. So I'm in a horse dance, it's like, okay, I'm grounded. Spine is upright, shoulders relaxed. Every time, grounded, spine upright, shoulders relaxed. And then you don't have to think about it anymore. So now that we're all grounded, let's begin. Waist opening, turning side to side, nice and gently, gets the blood moving. We're loosening up the shoulders a little bit, loosening up the hips, the low back. At the same time, we're tapping those kidneys. And on top of the kidneys sits the adrenal glands. We're gonna be focusing on a movement pattern today that specifically helps to nourish the kidneys. A few more times. I usually like to go until I just feel warmed up and ready to go. So, I feel ready. <laughs> I think Veronica's ready as well. Let's bring our feet together. We're gonna take care of our knees because we're gonna be grounded throughout today's practice. So make sure the knees are taken care of. As usual, we wanna warm up the knees with our hands first, very good. And then support the knees on the outside. Make some circles with your knees. As usual, Veronica is modifying. She's not doing as big of a circle as me. You can do larger circles or smaller circles. It does not matter, do what's comfortable. Other direction, just warming them up. There we go. Thank the knees. All right. Today, we're going to focus on number five and number six of the series of eight. If you haven't uh, practiced one, two, three, or four, you can look at the previous episodes. And it's okay. If you're here now, continue on through today's class because we're going to review all eight of these at the end of class today. So we're just going to jump right in with number five which is one of my favorites, partly because of the name. And it's called Dragon Drinks from the River. All right, so let's get started. Horse dance. And what do we do when we're in a horse dance? What's the reminder? Grounded, spine upright, shoulders relaxed. A couple of tips to set you up to win. Number one, keep a strong um, low back because we're gonna be hinging forward like this and really listen to and honor the signals of your body because it's gonna be, it can be a little intense, a little painful in the hips here. This is gonna be mobilizing the hip joint, all right? Tight hips lead to low back pain. As we do this movement pattern, okay, I'm setting you up, uh, imagine the ball and socket joint, right? You've got your hip and you got the femur going right in here. We're gonna loosen up that joint. Last thing, energetically, this is the only uh, meridian that goes horizontally. So this particular movement pattern is going to activate the only horizontal energy meridian in the entire body, which I think is pretty cool. All the other meridians come up parallel on the body or right down the center line. Enough said, it's go time. Hands on your hips. Uh, and I do want to say that Veronica has been modifying this one, so I'm going to show you the modified version with Veronica and then we're going to get into the deep dive of Dragon Drinks from the River. So, for those of you who have tight hips and just need to take it easy at first, here's how we do it. Shift your weight to your left leg and straighten your right leg until you start to feel it become a little tight. And then, bring your bottom back, shift your weight to your right leg as you straighten your left. Push the hips forward, which stretches the ligaments in the front, and now let's go the other way. Shift your weight to your right leg and this is straightening your left. You're gonna feel it in here. It's gonna come down like, ooh, that's where I need to stop. Go back with your hips. Shift your weight. You're unlocking this hip and push the hips forward. So that's what Veronica is gonna be doing. You can follow her or we're gonna do some more of the advanced work with the uh, dragon drinks from the river. Ready. Hinge at the hip. Dragon comes down, has a drink. 
Come on up. Good. Shift your weight to your left leg as you straighten your right. Come on down. Shift your weight to the other side. And slowly come on up. Then back the other way. Shift your weight, come, or excuse me, come on down, straight down the center, have a drink. Come on up, and then back the way we came. Come down, shift your weight, come on up. Now I'm noticing that I'm already starting to have my hips loosen up. I may pause here and there, I want you to continue practicing as I'm, as I'm making these pointers for you at home and for Veronica, so you can continue on. We're gonna go to the, um, Next level, which is gonna include the shoulder. Let me get in sync here with Veronica. And uh, come on down, come down, and up. Shift your weight to your left. Roll your right shoulder now as we come down. Very good. Shift your weight to your right. Come on up. And down. Hinge, and up. Back the way we came. As you shift your weight to your right, Roll that left shoulder as you come down. Shift weight, come on up. Last element we're gonna add, this layer is breathing. So follow along, ready? We exhale as we come down. Breathe in on the way up. Shift your weight to your left, breathe out on the way down. Shift weight to your right, in, on the way up, back to center. Out on the way down. In on the way up, back the way we came. Roll that shoulder out as you come down. Shift weight, good job. In, out, back to center. So that is Dragon Drinks from the River. I'm gonna ask Veronica to go around a couple times and just see if I can point out a few things that will help optimize your practice at home. Remember, it starts with the body first, and then you add the breath when you're ready. I don't want you to feel challenged like you're supposed to do everything all at once. Layer in the breath when you're ready. You don't have to do the breathing each time. So what I want you to notice, Veronica's smiling. It's important to have fun, and remember why we're doing what we're doing, so enjoy. The other thing I wanna point out, as Veronica goes to her right, the left hip is gonna become tight in the front and in the side, and that's okay but we won't, don't want it to be too tight. There's something that I like to call the therapeutic threshold of pain. There's a pain that hurts, hurts, and is not good and can uh, cause damage to the tissues, but there's a type of pain that actually helps us heal and is beneficial, like a six or seven out of 10. You know when you stretch, there's that feeling where it hurts when you're stretching, but it also feels a little good? That's where we wanna be. So listen to that and honor the signals of your body and you'll be right at the sweet spot. All right, so let's go ahead and do it one more time together. I'm gonna just catch up here. Dragon drinks from the river. Don't forget to have a drink. And back to center. Very good. This can be the most intense one. Again, take it easy. The goal isn't to be um, dropping all the way down to the ground. You don't have to be able to do the splits. It's about activating the meridians in our body. And you could even do this one sitting down, okay? So if you're sitting down, you're just gonna go around like this, and you're still activating that horizontal meridian we talked about earlier called the daimai. Next is one of my favorite um, Qigong movement patterns. It's called nourishing the kidneys. We talk about it so much, even during the warm-up when we're doing this. So much of dis-ease in today's society has to do with stress because we're depleting the adrenaline in our adrenal glands because our bodies are so much caught up in that fight or flight. According to traditional Chinese medicine, we have to treat adrenal fatigue or kidney qi deficiency. How do we help with a deficiency? We nourish. And this movement pattern is called nourishing kidneys and it does exactly that. Feet together, or excuse me, feet either together or just underneath your hips. You wanna be grounded, okay? I want you to really pay attention to smooth fluid movements. Soften your hands because this is a, um, this is a real, this is a good one for feeling that chi. You know how we work on our chi ball? This one is really good for that. So focus on the hands as well. Last thing that I want to deliver to help set you up to win is uh, qigong can be some work. 
whew, it's okay if you're sweating. Look, I'm sweating too. But the other thing is, I want you to visualize, there's a point where we go up, we go down, and then we bring our hands back to our kidneys. Imagine your hands are full of energy and you're gonna charge those kidneys up. It's like when, when they're in the ER and they say clear, boom, and they give it that charge, that's what we're doing. I think you're ready. I know Veronica's ready. Let's begin. Breathe in as you float the hands up to the sky all the way up. This time there's gonna be a slight arch in the back. Hold for a moment as you gaze upwards and softly, slowly breathe out as you bring the hands down in front of you. Finish your out breath at the bottom. Breathe in, bring your hands to your kidneys. They can touch the kidneys or hover just past them, out off the kidneys. Breathe out through the kidneys that she goes through the kidneys, down the back of your legs for a nice, gentle stretch. Enjoy the stretch. Oh, it feels so good. Slowly come up one vertebrae at a time. I like to just do a little wiggle, but that's optional. And we're set up to go again. Breathe in, all the way up, all the way up. You wanna feel the stretch. Hold the breath. Imagine that chi flowing through your body, even though your body is still. And again, breathe out. Feel the chi in your hands. What do you notice in your hands and around your hands? Finish your out breath at the bottom. Breathe in, bring your hands to your kidneys. Breathe out through the kidneys, down the back of your legs. Enjoy that little stretch. And again, Slowly, come on up. Veronica's gonna continue. I'm gonna point out a few things, nice and slow. One of the reasons we have an arch in the back is we wanna feel stretch in the front here. So slight stretch in the front and the abdomen. Very good, breathe out. I want Veronica to focus on the energy and I want you to focus on the energy right here underneath your hands. It's like there's a balloon that you're gently pushing down and you can feel that Tai Chi ball. Veronica is gonna breathe in, take her hands to her kidneys, breathe out, down the kidneys, and interestingly, she's going down the back of the legs, which is where the urinary bladder channel travels. When I do it, you might notice I go out by my pinky because that's the end of the meridian, pinky toe, and then up. There's an internal, external relationship between the kidneys, energetically, and the urinary bladder channel. So this is very much in tune and designed to optimize our chi flow. So I'm gonna continue here, and out. Nice stretch, Veronica. All the way out. Oh, it feels good, feel that chi in your hands. All right, breathe in, bring your hands to your kidneys. Breathe out through the kidneys. Now we're pushing that energy down the urinary bladder channel. And I invite you to look that up online so you can see that pathway. If you notice, my hands travel outside my pinky toe, which is the end of that meridian. We're gonna complete by bringing our hands up with a breath to shoulder height and out. Nice. All right, I'm in the zone, I'm in the Qigong zone. I hope you are too. What we're gonna do now is go through all eight of the Qigong movement patterns. I think it's a great opportunity to just go one through eight so you can practice at home. I want to remind you that these movement patterns can be done more than two or three times in a row. In fact, if you've got the time or there's a particular movement pattern that you like, take on doing the movement five or 10 times in a row and you're just gonna go deeper and deeper into the magic of this world of chi and energy. For today's class, we're gonna keep it to uh, more or less two repetitions. The eight brocades, also known as the Ba Duan Jin. Feet underneath your hips. Number one, lifting heaven or lifting sky. Breathe in as you float your palms up to the sky. Big breath in, reach and hold, softly breathe out. I also invite you to hold your breath longer if you're able to at home. 
for now, you can just stay with, keep up with us, okay? Breathe in, all the way up. You'll notice that your breath, you'll be able to hold your breath longer and longer the more you practice. And breathe out. Holding your breath for long periods of time, again, is not the goal, but it's something to pay attention to as a measure of how deep am I going today. So that's number one. Number two is kind of fun for the warriors out there, horse dance. It's called Hunter Draws the Bow and Arrow to Hunt, well, the Eagle. All right, ready? Cross your arms. You're in a deep horse dance. Draw your bow and arrow. We're gonna to aim to the left first. Breathe in as you expand the chest. Release the string. Breathe out as both hands come down. All the way down. Very good. Cross your arms. Prepare to go the other direction. Draw that string back. Make an L shape with your aiming hand. Bring the shoulder blades together. Release. Breathe out. Excellent. We're, gonna, we're just gonna do it twice. I wanna um, work on some things at the end here. Thank you, way to be ready. We typically go twice in a row. All right, next one, uh, feet underneath our hips. Separating heaven and earth. Left hand comes up first, breathe, that, uh, breathe in. Float that left hand all the way to the sky. Right palm down. Gazing upwards. Feel the stretch right here in that rib cage. Should feel good. Breathe out. Turn the palms towards each other. Compressing that Tai Chi ball. Feel that energy. Ah, it's great. And then up the other side. In through the nose. Reach, flatten that palm, flatten that palm, hold it, and out. Bring the palms towards each other slowly. One more time, both sides. I'm going to see what Veronica is doing over here. She's going all the way up. We're checking that other palm. It's facing the earth, that energy coming up and down to the earth to the sky or the heavens, to her palm, and breathe out. Good job, Veronica. Compress that Tai Chi ball. Last time. Breathe in. Each time, you may be able to go a little bit farther and breathe in a little bit more deeply, and that's fine. Go for it. And out. There it is. Whew, feeling good. We're gonna prepare for the next one. Dabbing off a little bit. It's Wise Owl Looks Over Shoulder. Horse dance. We're just gonna do this one once each direction. What do we remember to do when we get in the horse dance? Automatically, we wanna get grounded, spine upright, shoulders relaxed. Awesome. We're gonna to turn to our left first. Wise Owl Looks Over Shoulder. Breathe in as you turn your waist first, and then your head, hold it. You gotta bring down this shoulder. Breathe out. All right, other side. In, turn the waist, and then the head. Actively bring these shoulders down. Actively relax these muscles in the neck. And out. Back to center. We're already set up for dragon drinks from the river. It also has a name of the snake wags the head and the tail, because your bottom's going back, your head's going this way. I've also heard it be called the dog wags its head and tail. You pick your favorite animal this time, all right? You have an animal in mind? Okay, here we go. Hinge forward, animal drinks from the river or wags the head and tail. Come on up. We breathe in on the way up if you're adding the breath. Shift your weight to your right, excuse me, your left. Roll that shoulder down, breathe out. Shift your weight. Breathe in on the way up. Out on the way down. Have a drink. Come on up. Shift your weight to your right leg. Remember to roll that shoulder. Breathe out on the way down. In on the way up and back to center. Great. 
Let's bring our feet back underneath our hips. Moving on to nourish the kidneys. Starting. Breathe in, float those hands up. Let that balloon float your hands up. There we go. Slight arch in the back. Hold, hold, out through the mouth. Bring your attention to the sensation, the energy field around your hands. Breathe into the kidneys, out down the back of the legs. All right, that feels good. Come on up slowly. And we're gonna complete right here by floating the hands up to shoulder height. And breathe out. Remember, you can practice these multiple times in a row, and I encourage you to do so three, five, ten times in a row. Now that we're relaxed and nourished, we're going to begin Wide Eyes to Amass Power, and it's really designed to bring the energy up, and the last two do exactly that. Horse dance. This is the powerful one. It's called Wide Eyes to Amass Power. We're going to have our fists here. As we bring our fists back, we breathe in. You're gonna feel a spring like in your lungs and it just wants to release with a powerful exhale and two punches coming forward. And we're gonna release them together, okay? When you release that exhale through your mouth, it just let it all go. There may be some vocalization. Some people key out and go, huh! you know, it's entirely up to you. It's not necessary. Just let that power move through you. The energy's coming up, your feet charged up, boom, and then out. Ready? Okay, I'm, I, I'm already feeling that energy building up at home, so here we go. Big breath in. Hold it. Hold. Excellent. Breathe in with your right hand. Bring your right fist back. Slow breath out as you push the fist forward. Good. In. Out. Push the fist forward. Again. And out, wide eyes to amass power. Again. Out. All right, here we go. Last two times, big power. Breath in. Hold it. <laughs> in. <laughs> Excellent. All right, now that she's flowing, we're gonna bounce it with shaking illness from the body. Up onto the toes, onto the heels. Toes to heels, in on the way up, out on the way down. In, out, in, out. And you can go at your own rhythm. So you don't have to stay in sync with me or Veronica. Just up and down, up and down. A few more times. You wanna feel the forces coming from your heels, like literally the vibration going through your bones, up the femur, up the spine, to the top of your head. Can you feel the little shake in the top of your head? It's kind of jolting, right? That's what we're going for. At the same time, while we're doing this, we're pumping our lymphatic system, which is so good for our health and our immune system. You know, our lymphatic system doesn't have its own natural pump. The only way to pump the lymphatic system is by doing something like this. That's why we do this practice. Swimming is also really good for pumping the lymphatic system right here in the axilla or the armpit. A few more times. One, two, three. All right, good. Horse dance. Let's relax and focus on our Tai Chi ball now that all the Chi is flowing. We just completed the eight brocades, the eight movement patterns. This is the time we get to play and explore and discover and cultivate the Chi that's now moving freely through our bodies by concentrating it here in our hands. Make sure you line your palms up, bring them closer together and farther apart until you establish and feel that chi or energy sensation. Some people describe it as heat at first, and then what's beyond the heat is the magnetism. There's like a pulling. As you bring your hands closer together and farther apart, it might feel like there's a pressure and a pulling, almost like getting two magnets. And when you have two positives facing each other, they repel each other a bit, right? See if you can feel that yourself. If you're having a hard time feeling that sensation, uh, bring your hands closer together without touching, okay? 
and then just move your wrists back and forth a centimeter or two. And that will really help to uh, establish that connection. Uh, room temperature is helpful and no fans. If, if you're outside, uh, the wind can be distracting. That takes us back to the physical. It's, it's uh, engaging the mechanical and pressure receptors on our skin. We don't want any distractions. We just want to be focused on our energetic body. So no wind on you. Make sure the room's not too cold. And just about all of us, it's quite possible to feel this. Now, if you're not feeling the chi sensation, I would invite you to work with a partner. And um, I'll just give you a, a quick idea about how we do that. You can continue right there. So if you have a partner, you can actually bring your ball by their ball and you'll feel it. Um, so, actually, would you mind turning towards me just for a moment? Thank you. We have to etiquette. Excellent. Ball. Thank you. If you bring your hand around someone else's, that really supercharges it. Okay? So I invite you to work with a partner at home. Thank you, Veronica. Okay. Let's finally take a little bit of that energy and put it back into our body, wherever that needs to go. A little tender, loving care. And we're gonna take all that practice, all that energy, and anchor it into our Dantian, our energetic center. You're also welcome to anchor it in your heart or both. Take a moment, acknowledge yourself for the work that you've done, that we've done, and prepare this energy for good use throughout today's, the rest of your day, the rest of the week. We are now complete. Thank you.